Welcome to our champion data guide for the best entry-level helmets of 2022. When you first start riding, one of the most important decisions you have to make is which helmet to start with. And it gets even more difficult when you want to make sure that you are actually hooked up with a quality helmet that performs well. That's why we have collected our best beginner helmets and gave them to our test rider to test with our measuring equipment tools. He came back with a lot of interesting data, so stay tuned to find out which helmet can call itself the very best beginner helmet of 2022. Hi everyone, my name is Liv from Champion Helmets and welcome to our channel. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all of our reviews, road tests and guides. While you're at it, hit that like button and let us know in the comments what you think of this video. Just as there is a large section of helmets in the premium segment, there is also a lot of choice in the beginner segment of the market. But what do we mean by beginner segment? By the beginner segment, we mean all the helmets in our range that fall under 300 euros or 360 US dollars. So while this means you might have to pay a little more, there are a large number of helmets that perform well in this price range. To find out what each helmet has to offer in terms of performance, we gave our test rider the AGV K1, the HJC E90, the HGC E70, the Shark Squall 2.2, the AGV K3 SV, the Nolan N87+, the Scorpion XO520 Air, the Nolan Nolan N66, the Bell Qualifier DLX and the Scorpion XO491. And in this video we are going to find out which helmet can truly call itself the best. Okay, first let's look at what these helmets are made of. This in fact has effect on weight, safety and performance. For this part we will look at two points. The first point we look at is at what material the outer shell is made of. Here we have divided everything into three options increasing in quality. These are polycarbonate, fiberglass and carbon. The second point we look at is the number of shell sizes in which the helmet is available. This is something that is often overlooked but is indeed important. The more shell sizes a helmet has, the more compact around the head and the safer it is. In addition, a helmet with a compact outer shell also looks better. Now let's look at the results that came out of the material section. What is immediately noticeable is that everyone is really matched on this component. The helmets all score 2.5 to 3 stars which is quite reasonable. However, we do not see a single helmet that managed to achieve the full 5 stars. This mainly is because none of them are made of carbon and most come in only 2 shell sizes. All in all, the helmets do reasonably well on the material component. Now let's see what these scores mean for their weight. In our weight metrics, you can see transparently how our scores are constructed. The lighter the helmet, the more stars it earns. To make a good comparison for the weight component, we weight all helmets in a size M. Now let's start looking at the results. We see that the majority of helmets score excellent. What is remarkable is that the HJC E70 with a weight of 1506 grams comes out as the lightest entry level helmet. And on the other hand, we see the HJC E90 with a weight of 1760 grams that comes out the heaviest. The same brand, but both different scores. Are you not only curious about how the helmets perform individually, but do you also want to know how the brands in general compare to each other? Then watch our video, The Best Brand Helmet of 2022. I'm posting a link to the video in the description at the bottom of this video. Other than that, also in this section, all the helmets are fairly matched. So let's quickly move on to the next section. We have now arrived at the visor component. To determine a score on the visor, we look at all kinds of properties of the visor. Examples are if the helmet is pin lock prepared and if the pin lock lens comes standard in the box and even better if this is a Max Vision pin lock lens. In addition we also look at the visor mechanism. Is this a simple lever or does it have an advanced spring mechanism? Furthermore we want to know if the helmet comes with an integrated sun visor, what the field of view is like and if it comes with a free dark visor and if there are any other accessories. Of course, one option is obviously not the other, so some points are therefore weighted more heavily than others. Now let's look at how our helmets fared up. If we look at the visor scores, we see that the Bell Qualifier DLX managed to trump its competition with an excellent score of 4.5 stars. The Nolan N66 and the XO491 disappoint on this part with a moderate score of 2 stars. At the very bottom we see the AGV K1 which scores only 1 star for its minimalistic visor. 
Okay, now let's move on to the next part, the noise insulation. We measure the noise during our road test with a decibel meter which is mounted on our bike. This is connected to a microphone that is placed near our rider's ear. So we can see exactly the noise as our rider experiences it on the bike. Our rider has ridden long stretches of highway for each helmet and from this the average decibel score is taken. These measurements were all taken at a wind speed between 115 and 130 km per hour. A decibel difference may seem negligible at first, but at values like this every decibel difference is clearly audible, so every decibel is clearly heard. Also in this section we use a score metrics that we have developed especially for the noise isolation part. In this metrics we have established ranges to map the performance or the lack of it for you. The lower the number of decibels, the quieter the helmet is and the higher the number of stars the helmet scores. According to our metrics, a score below 98 decibels results in the ultimate score of 5 stars. Now all that's left is the question, how did our helmets do on the noise part? Now let's see. What we see right away is that the HGC E70 once again is doing extremely well. With a measurement of 99 decibels for noise, the helmet gets a top score of 4.5 stars. This places the E70 in the top 10 of the quietest helmets that we have ever tested. Want to know which other helmets are in this top 10? Then watch our video, the top 10 quietest helmets of 2022. I will also put a link for you to this video in the description. If we then look further, we see that the Shark Squad 2.2, the Nolan N66 and the Scorpion 520R are also not inferior. With an average decibel score of 101, all three of these helmets earn a decent 3.5 stars for noise isolation. Okay, now let's move on to another important part of a helmet, the ventilation. To arrive at a score for ventilation, we compare the temperature inside the helmet to the temperature outside. A well-ventilating helmet dispatches heat efficiently and keeps the inside temperature the same as the outside temperature. Again, a brief explanation on how we arrived at our results. When we look at our ventilation metrics, we again use ranges to determine our score. If it's not warmer inside the helmet than the outside temperature, we speak of an excellent ventilation. The lower the temperature difference, the more stars the helmet earns for its ventilation. Now let's see how our helmets performed. The HSA E90 takes the lead in this section. The temperature inside the helmet was no less than 1 degree cooler than the outside temperature, which tells us that this helmet is equipped with real top ventilation and especially for an entry level helmet this is really a very good result and with this the helmet deserves a score of 5 stars. Furthermore, we see no major outliers on this part except for the Bell Qualifier DLX which had a temperature difference of 8.5 degrees which is really disappointing. Okay, so much for ventilation. This brings us to comfort. Comfort is the only subjective part of our road test. We call it comfort, but actually it includes much more than just comfort. This section assesses subjective criteria such as comfort, wind resistance on the road, the feel of the inner lining, the finish and the overall feel to the helmet. These are criteria that are difficult to capture in hard data and that is why we lead on our test riders more than 15 years of riding experience for this component. What is nice to know here is that our test rider is also the one who tested all the helmets so he can compare the helmets like no other and make an honest judgment about how they compare to each other. All these helmets have been extensively tested in an individual review and a point is awarded for comfort. Most helmets score 2.5 to 3 stars in this section. What we see is that the helmets are fairly evenly matched, but that the HJC E70 in this part underperforms with a disappointing score of 1.5 stars. Okay, so now we have arrived at the feature section. In this part we find out what options manufacturers have incorporated into their helmets. For this section we look at the extras that the helmet comes with as standard. In doing so we have taken into account the options that riders have asked us for the most. The HJC E90 once again stands out in this section with a strong score of 4 stars. Other than that, we see that none of the helmets really score well in this section, which is quite unfortunate to see. We don't see any top scores in this section, but we are talking about the cheaper helmets here, so we can't expect too much when we talk about features. Okay. Now that we know this, we will look at how the helmets perform across the board. What is immediately noticeable is that the HJC E90 consistently scores well on every component. Also, the Nolan N87 Plus, the AGV K3 SV and the Shark Squall generally score well too. The AGV K1, the XO491 and the Qualifier DLX are overall the weaker helmets. But what do all these scores mean when we look at the price of the helmets? 
Each helmet performs differently on different parts, but perhaps one of the most important factors that also plays a role is the price. Because if two helmets perform the same, but one has a lower price, then this one scores relatively better. To determine the price quality score, we look at two things. First, we calculate the price per earned star, which says something about the price. And second, we look at the average number of stars, which tells us something about the quality. When we enter these factors into our formula, we arrive at our price quality score. This score gives us a much better idea of how the helmets compare to each other and how effectively their price is related to their performance. This is the last score we add before we get to the final results, so let's take a look. First, we see the AGV K3 SV getting the highest price performance score of 4.2. This is due to its good average star rating of a 3.1 at a price of 8 euros per star. Next, we see the HJC E90 in second place with a nice average star score of a 3.4, which comes in at a price of 10 euros per star. So the HJC E90 scores better than the AGV K3 SV, but because the price of the E90 is a lot higher than the K3 SV, it scores lower in this section. Below the E90, we see the HJC E70 followed by the Shark Squall 2.2 and the Scorpion 520 Air. If we then look farther, we see the Scorpion XO491 and the Nolan N87 Plus, which both get a price quality bonus of a 1.9. We can see that the Nolan N87 Plus is penalized in this section by its high price. Indeed, overall it scored a neat 3.1 stars, but at the same time it comes with a price of 240 euros which also make this helmet the most expensive entry level helmet that we have tested. At the bottom we see the Bell Qualifier DLX and the AGV K1. Okay, nice. Now that we know this, we can finally announce which helmet can call itself the very best entry-level helmet of 2022. On the 10th place we see the AGV K1. This helmet scored well on weight, but that's about it. Especially on the parts noise, comfort and features, the helmet scored below average. On place 9 we see the Bell Qualifier DLX, which managed to get a top score for its advanced visor, but badly failed on ventilation, features and noise. Then in place 8 we have the Scorpion XO491 which scored average overall, only for its visor and features did it come out as one of the lowest performance in the test. Then we see the Nolan N66 in place 7 followed by the Scorpion 520 Air in place 6. Now we have come to the first helmet of our top 5, which is the Nolan N87 Plus. This helmet scored consistently well on all criteria but was punished for its price to quality ratio. Then in the fourth place we see the HJC E70 which also scored consistently well but failed on the comfort and features components. Now we have arrived at our top 3. On third place we see the Shark Squall 2.2 and this helmet was strong on its weight and visor but missed out on points in the features section. And now the most exciting question of this data review, which helmet really is the best entry level helmet of 2022? Is it the AGV or the HGC? The answer to this question is the HJC. This helmet never let us down anywhere and was in the top spot on every section. The AGV K3 SV also scored well across all criteria, only the HJC E90 did better on the noise and the features components. With an average star rating of 3.4 stars, the HJC E90 is the rightful winner. This concludes our search for the best entry-level helmets of 2022. We have carefully gone through all the entry-level helmets and tested them out on the road with all of our measuring equipment on our motorcycle, which allowed us to arrive at actual values. If any of these helmets are something for you, then be sure to take a look at championhelmets.com where we have our lowest price guarantee and great different bundle deals. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all of our reviews, road tests and guides. My name is Liv from Champion Helmets. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.